Hey, this is Presh Talwalkar. What is the expected number of coin flips until you get two heads in a row? Also, what is the expected number of coin flips until you get a heads followed by a tails? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. At first glance, it would appear that these two questions would have the same answer. After all, if you flip a coin two times, the probability of getting HH is exactly equal to the probability of getting HT, which is 25%. But that's the puzzling part. The expected number of coin flips for HT and HH are not the same. Let's try and understand why. Let's first imagine we're flipping to two heads in a row. On the first flip of the coin, we can either get a heads or we can get a tails. We will now track where we go for each subsequent flip. If we flipped a tails on our first toss, there's a 50% chance that we will flip tails again and remain in that state. There is also a 50% chance that we will flip heads and transition into the state of having flipped heads. If we're in the state of having flipped heads, there's a 50% chance we will flip tails and go to the state of having flipped tails, and there's a 50% chance that we will get another heads, which will bring us to two heads in a row. Now, each of these arrows represents a transition probability of 50%. Because each arrow has the same transition probability of 50%, I will simply omit the numbers so that the diagram is easier to read. Now we have an understanding of the states in order to get two heads in a row. Now let's consider a similar diagram if we're flipping to a heads followed by a tails. On our first flip, we can either get a heads or a tails. If we flip a tails on our first toss, there's a 50% chance we'll flip another tails, and there's a 50% chance that we'll flip a heads and transition to the state of having flipped a heads. If we're in the state of having flipped a heads, there's a 50% chance that we will flip another heads and stay in that state, and there's a 50% chance that we will transition and get a tails, and so we'll have a heads followed by a flip of a tails. Now let's compare this diagram to the states when we're trying to flip to two heads in a row. You'll notice that these two diagrams are not the same, and that should suggest to you that the expected number of flips to these two outcomes might be different. In fact, these diagrams suggest that it's going to take fewer flips to get to heads followed by tails. To see why, you will always need to flip a heads before you get to the outcome you want. When you're flipping to a heads followed by a tails, there's a 50% chance that you will flip a heads and remain in that state, or there's a 50% chance that you will flip and get a tails and then go to HT. So you are either going to go to the winning state or you're going to stay in the state of heads. If you're trying to flip to two heads, on the other hand, there's a 50% chance that you will flip another heads and you'll get to the winning state, but there's also a 50% chance that you will go backwards and flip a tails. So you'll end up going to another state. You're not going to be in the state that's one away from winning the outcome you want. So intuitively, we can guess that it'll take fewer flips to get to heads followed by tails. Now let's prove it. We want to calculate the expected number of flips until we get a heads followed by a tails. On our first flip, we're either going to get to heads or tails. So we are then going to have one plus the expected number of flips from each of those states. Mathematically, it's written as one toss for the first toss we're going to make 
plus we want the probability of flipping ahead times the expected number of flips from the state of having flipped aheads, and we want the probability of flipping a tails times the expected number of flips from the state of having flipped a tails. The probability of flipping heads and tails are both equal to 50%. So what remains is to calculate the expected number of flips from the state of having heads and from the state of having tails. So let's calculate the expected number of flips to get to HT if we're already in the state of H. There are two things that can happen. There's a 50% chance that we remain in the state of heads, in which case we have basically wasted one flip, or there's a 50% chance that we flip a tails and we get to the winning state of HT. We can simplify this expression because the probability of H and the probability of tails is 50%. We now have an equation in one variable, which is the expected number of flips from the state of heads. We can solve this equation and get the expected number of flips to HT from H is equal to two. We'll do a similar thing and calculate the expected number of flips from the state of T. There's a 50% chance that we'll remain in the state of tails, and there's a 50% chance we'll go to the state of heads, in which case we'll have the expected number of flips from being in the state of heads. So we know the expected number of flips from the state of heads is equal to two, and we can substitute that quantity in. We now have an equation in one variable, which is the expected number of flips from the state of tails. We can therefore solve this equation that the expected number of flips from the state of tails is equal to four. We now can substitute these two quantities into our original equation, and we can solve that the expected number of flips to HT is equal to four. So on average, it'll take us four flips to have a heads followed by a tails. Now let's solve the other question. How many flips it'll take to get to two heads in a row? On our first flip, we're either going to get to heads or tails with 50% probability each. We then need to calculate the expected number of flips from each state, having flipped a heads and having flipped a tails. This problem will be a little more complicated, but it'll be a similar approach. If we flipped a heads, there's a 50% probability that we're gonna go flip another heads and we'll get to our state of HH. And there's a 50% chance that we'll flip a tails, in which case we're kind of going backwards and we'll need to know the expected number of flips from the state of having tails. Either case is equally likely. We'll simplify this equation a bit, but we now have an equation that involves the expected number of flips from the state of tails. So let's try and solve for that equation. If you're on tails, there's a 50% chance that you can stay there, and there's a 50% chance that you're gonna to go to heads. So we'll write out that equation. We're gonna use one toss to either get to the same state of tails, or we're gonna use one toss to get to the state of heads, in which case we have the expected number of tosses from being in heads. We can simplify this expression and we end up with an equation that involves the state of heads. So we now have two equations and two variables. We can substitute our first equation, the expected number of tosses from the state of heads into our second equation, and then we can solve for both variables. We end up with the expected number of tosses from the state of heads is four, and the expected number of tosses from the state of tails is six. We can substitute this back into our original equation, and we're going to get that the expected number of flips until we see two heads in a row is equal to six. So it'll actually take two more flips to see two heads in a row than it will take to see a heads followed by a tails. Now there's one more thing we can do. Imagine in our proofs, we always replace the letter H with the letter T and the letter T with the letter H. This will basically allow us to solve for the expected number of flips until we get two tails in a row and the expected number of flips until we get a tails followed by a heads. So if we make those substitutions, we can similarly find out that it'll take six tosses to get two tails in a row 
and it'll take four tosses to get a tails followed by a heads. Did you figure this problem out? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Press Walker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.